Hi, Sam. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Yourself? Ah, cool, got it. You okay? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> How's your week so far? Morning. This week has been actually super busy because uh, SDSU is almost over. Like the yeah. semester's almost over, so everyone's just kind of like emailing me and and worrying about their grade and stuff and turning in last minute stuff. So that's yeah, it's okay though. Of course, yeah, it's life. Nothing new. So, Chris Nuff. how's it going? Good. All right, looks like still waiting on Jesse. And Victoria. Victoria. Victoria, yeah. Okay, good morning, guys. Just grab, if you check out the chat, there's a link. Just get today's files, and I should write this on the screen here. Please have, well, of course, have After Effects open, but um, when we work on Alpha Track Mat, and even maybe before, I think it's a good idea to also have Photoshop up, open and Illustrator. I don't see anything in the chat. You said it's in the, the link is in the chat. Oh, really? Does everyone else see it? Maybe it's just my chat. No, I don't no, see anything in the group chat. I don't see it either. Oh, weird. Maybe because maybe I, I put it in there before you guys signed in so you don't you don't get the the history okay do you guys see that one <clears throat> yes yeah yes right. okay that's good to know i didn't know that i guess if you if you when you sign in you don't get to see the earlier chats I don't know if you guys got a chance to check out that trailer, that video that I sent. I'll just play it right here. Um, my friend's uh, an editor slash motion graphics artist slash animator. And um, if you guys have heard of the Tribeca Film Festival in New York, anyway, they're doing this film festival and he made this trailer. Whoa, the playback isn't very smooth for some reason. Okay, really the, the first like few seconds is, is what I want to focus on right here. Can anyone just give me a verbal strategy of how you would get started? Like, let's say, let's say a client came up to you and said, Hey, we love this trailer. We just, can you, can you make this for us? How would you guys get started? We love the style of this. We love how the words are getting revealed. It looks like two different or three different masks are being revealed. Mm -hmm. And video clips that are being masked. Yep. Okay, good. Um, I'm not sure who said that, but uh, I think it was a, and, yeah. and, and Heather. I heard a couple different voices. Okay. Wh whoever said it's masks that are being revealed. Um, yes, that is true. I think it's a little bit more accurate to say there has been masks that were animated revealing text. Right. Okay. And, um, and you know, I'm just trying to be technical because I think it's important to clarify, but I, I totally understood what you meant. Um, let's just focus on we are one. Someone tell me how many masks do you think were used to reveal we are one? Three. Okay. It looks like maybe just one, if yeah. the text is being brought through it. Yep. I feel like they're all moving at different speeds. So. Okay. Each piece. That's totally possible. Um, it could be three masks, but I do think that it's just one. But 
all the text is like broken up, right? Yeah, exactly. It's got to be broken up because because they're moving at different speeds. If so, if if it was only one mask, would all three of those text layers have to be in a comp? Yes. And then you would mask. Okay, the comp? Great, great comment, Heather. All right. So that's let's just get started. I think that's a good enough discussion. And even if you're not exactly sure what everybody was contributing, I feel like the majority of you guys um, understand how to create this. I'm opening up a file that I gave you in today's folder called uh, 01 trailer. I think that's what it's called. The, my Zoom thing is blocking my top of my window. Yeah, it's called 01 trailer. And what I've done is I've just created three separate text layers. Okay, and I'm gonna, I don't know. Do you guys wanna see if you can just create that same motion on your own? Or maybe it's best if I just, I'll just do a quick demo. I, I think that's, that's faster. Okay, first, before we do any masking, I'm gonna animate the words just moving out to side from right to left. And since they're already kind of in the perfect position, watch, I'm just gonna move my timeline down and I'm gonna animate backwards, okay? Meaning they're already in the perfect final position. So I hit the letter P and I keyframe all three of these words exactly where I want them. I keyframe the position attribute and then I'm gonna move back in time a little bit, okay? I'm just going 10 frames, okay? When you're, when you're just throwing down some animation really fast, it's your rough draft as a motion graphics artist, don't worry about your timing too much. As you get more experience, you will then know whether or not to use uh, a separation of three frames, five frames, or 10 frames to move things around, maybe 15 even. But don't concern yourself too much about it right now because you can always change that later. Okay, now check this out. Now I'm going to move all of these words to the right. Okay, how far do I, do I know to move them? Well, we can, there's a, a couple of different ways. We can kind of just use a space bar and, and this is kind of like a hack. This is a hack solution. Like I can use that to line up I can use the edge of the screen to line up against the wall and then I, I know exactly how far I got to move them all out. Okay, the word we probably has to be moved over to the left a little more. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'm going to hit the letter N to shrink my work area so I don't have to wait another two seconds for it to loop. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, exactly what you guys had mentioned, you have to keyframe the position of these words. And then Heather said you've got to pre-comp them together or comp them together. So I'll select all with command A and then shift command C is to comp them together. And I'll call this, I'll just call this words comp to be very organized. They've all been merged down into composition. And if you look closely at my project window, not only is there a comp one, which was like our main composition, but there's now another comp, a sub comp that's been nested into comp one called words comp. And anytime you pre comp layers or merge them together into a comp, they will, that comp will appear in your project window so you can quickly access it by just double clicking. You can also access a comp by double clicking in your timeline and it shows up as another tab. Okay, just um, keep watching here. We will do this together as a group, I promise. And now I can see them moving, but if we go back and look at the reference here, you can't see, there's like a, almost like they're in another room, right? It's like there's an invisible barrier blocking. So that's just the mask. Okay, I'll let them get revealed. I select the comp and then I use this rec rectangular mask tool. Keyboard command is Q. And I'm just going to, it's really up to you if, if you, when you first make a mask, it's going to be an add mask. If it were a subtract mask, the mask would be inverted, okay? And a mask will always uh, isolate what you drag it around or what you create a mask around. 
Okay, it looks like a little bit sticking out there. So I'm just going to hit the letter V or switch back to my selection tool. And if you click on an edge, you instantly select two mask points and I can use my arrow keys and just nudge it over. Now when I hit play, it's getting revealed. Okay, let's try this together as a group. If you feel confident, just move ahead and do it on your own. You don't need to wait for me, but of course I'm gonna verbally dictate the steps here. Okay, we're starting out opening up exercise 01 trailer and there's the three words. Let's take a quick look at the reference again. These words are moving out and it's actually staggered, you know, okay, I, I forgot to stagger that part. That's pretty easy though. I'm, st I'm still going to animate them all at the same time, okay? So I'm going to select all of these layers and hit the letter P. Move your timeline down. Okay, so you've got all, all layers selected with Command A, hit P and that instantly exposes the position attribute. Okay, if you guys have a comment or question, just interrupt. Move your timeline down and click on the stopwatch and you'll instantly generate three position keyframes. I was using a hack solution by holding down spacebar and moving my text over to the side, but I also want to introduce this button down in the lower left-hand corner of your viewer next to where you see 100%. Okay, this is like your title safe guides. If you click on this drop-down menu, you can choose title action safe. And that can be a little bit helpful because you can see the crosshairs and then you don't have to use this hack solution of moving across the screen like that. Okay, I still have all three of my layers selected and I'm gonna move my timeline to the left and I'll use my arrow keys to just nudge all my text over, okay? Now I'm making sure that it's now gonna be aligned. All these words are aligned like so, okay? I'm, sh I'm moving my timeline just, I could hit spacebar and play it but then I've got to wait about an extra two seconds before it repeats. Please remember that the letter N as in Nancy is a quick way to shrink your work area down. Okay, finally, I'm gonna stagger the animation. The word we should be the first one popping out. So I'll select the other keyframes and just move them down a little bit. Okay, so the word we is the first keyframe that actually gets animated. And then one is gonna be the last. And look at how I've readjusted these keyframes into a step formation. Okay, anyone want me to repeat anything? Any comments, questions? Suggestions, anyone have an alternative way that they, they were thinking about doing it? Okay, um, of course, just interrupt me if something comes up. Now, if you guys look very carefully here, um, I am moving at a pretty fast pace, I, I know that. And it's just because this is the last day and I just kind of want to squeeze a lot in, okay? That's, that's really the only reason. I'm not, not trying to intentionally overwhelm anyone or create pressure, but uh, one thing you may have noticed is the timing of the motion of these words coming out, the timing, it's very subtle, but there's a gradual slow down. It's not like just like boom and then stop. Okay, so how do you gradually slow it down? Well, it all has to do with the second keyframe. Okay, the first keyframe is the starting position. The second keyframe is the ending position. So I'm gonna select all the keyframes that represent the end. And if I right click on it, I can choose keyframe assistant and I wanna ease that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm using, I'm right clicking or you know, on a Mac, if you don't have that right mouse button, you, you'll have to hold down control, control click or right click. And there's a sub menu called keyframe assistant. When you ease it in, what it does is, uh, I, I don't want to bring up the graph editor just yet, but but you could look at it, the graph editor 
icon. Animators often like to analyze the graph. Um, but After Effects Graph Editor, I feel like you don't have to jump into this until you get a little more advanced. But the button is right here at the top. It looks like a graph. It's a, almost right dead center in the timeline. But when you ease in, what it does is it, instead of a linear interpolation, instead of a linear or constant slope, okay, we go back to, to high school math, it's gonna be curved, which means that it slows down a little bit. Okay, it's very subtle, but hopefully you guys can notice that difference after you've, you've selected these keyframes, right-clicked and eased it in. Okay. The, the most confusing thing, the number one confusing thing when it comes to easing your animation or, or smoothing it out is people think that you should choose easy ease out because it's the, the end of the, the animation. It's, it's the second keyframe. So you think, oh, ease out. No, you ease in and you, and you ease out. And the way I explain this is using the analogy of when you when you pull out of your driveway or parking spot or garage, you ease out of it. Okay, so that would be the beginning keyframes. And when you when you pull into your garage or you pull into your parking spot, you ease into it. All right, that's my that's my analogy. All right, now it's time to draw a mask around this whole thing. Okay, there is nothing wrong with drawing a mask on each individual word. Okay, someone had said just mask them each, mask off each of these words individually. Nothing wrong with that. I didn't demonstrate that yet, but I will show you how that's done. All you have to do is just move over and drag a mask around here. Okay, around the word we. Let's take a look at how that looks. Whoops. So sorry. Okay, I'm going to abandon that real quick. I, I just, I'm sorry, I messed up. I, I was getting ahead of myself and um, that's not going to work. I don't want to, I went down the wrong path as a teacher, so I apologize. Let's just go back and do it the first way we discussed, which is to select all three of these layers. Okay, Heather had said, you got to pre-comp these words and merge them into one composition. So I'm going to hit Command A and then Shift Command C and a good name for this comp would just be like three words comp. I think it's really important to use descriptive naming conventions. You guys already understand working on a professional team, but even if you're working by yourself, when you look at your list of compositions in the project window in the upper left hand corner, it's going to be very, very helpful if you have descriptive names for all these comps instead of just having it be comp one, comp two. You know, who's going to know what comp 27 is? But if I see three words comp, I instantly can be reminded what it's about. And once I've got those three words comp, let's get to the, to the final position, okay? Animators often work backwards, meaning working towards the end of the video, towards the end of the timeline, and then working backwards because usually um, when people watch videos, things end up in the final position at the end. And so we need to start off with the final position. I'm going to start off with this final position and then hit the letter Q to activate your rectangle tool. Now be careful. If you hit the rec, if you hit the letter Q multiple times, I'm just tapping the letter Q right now. You might even be able to hear me tapping on the keyboard. And if you keep your eye on your toolbar, as you hit the letter Q, you'll see that you toggle through uh, like six or seven different shapes. Okay, I'm gonna stop on the rectangle and drag a, a mask. You guys already are familiar with that in Photoshop. If I think it's uh, M for marquee. If you hit Shift M, you'll toggle through different shapes in Photoshop. In After Effects, it's gonna be Q and you don't have to use Shift. Okay, sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Just started getting confusing there. But in After Effects, hit the letter Q to activate the rectangular mask tool and now when I hit play you can see that it's been masked okay I might need to adjust the mask a little bit you can see that my letters are sticking out a little bit no problem make sure that your mask points are square and not dots 
Okay, how do you, if you're, if you see your mask points and they are dots, you are in layer mode. If you, if you want to get to mask mode, click on the word mask one. And now the mask points will be squares and you can nudge them with the arrow keys without fear. Okay, I thought this was a good like intro lesson for the third day because I got to review setting keyframes. We set position keyframes. I got to review masking and I got to uh, talk about pre-comping layers, which we initially introduced with the robot arm exercise, but now we're, we're pre-comping for a totally different reason. We're pre-comping so that we can mask with one mask. Okay, anyone want me to repeat anything before I move on? I think we're good. Okay, in the, I'll, I'm gonna show one more thing before we go to the next exercise. You guys will notice that there is a, a video in here you can simply import by double clicking and just drag in a video. Check this out. I included a video called B footage. And once I import that video, it's going to show up in my project window and literally just drag it right into your viewer where you want it to go. Okay. There it is. You can see that in my timeline, I can see the duration of this B footage and I'm, but it's just too big. So I hit the letter S and I scale it down a little bit. And you can literally just use your arrow keys to nudge and adjust. Of course, just like Photoshop, if you hold shift, it'll jump 10 at a time. Did not know you could do this. <laughs> yeah, you can just drag in. Are you talking about dragging in videos? Yeah, I thought it was so much more complex than that. <laughs> okay. No, it's, it's very, very similar to Premiere. But um, honestly, if I'm, if I'm animating, sometimes I make really, really short videos for, for my Instagram story, you know, and then I'll, I'll quickly render it out and just email it my, to myself because they're so small and download it to my phone through my email and then upload to my Instagram story. Sometimes if the videos are really short, like under 10 seconds, I will actually do my video editing in After Effects because I can throw on motion graphics stuff way faster than I could do in Premiere. All right, and I'm just scaling it and just nudging it around. Of course, if you hold shift and hit P, you can show position and scale. And, um, and you can animate the position of these videos, just like you saw in the trailer, these videos are moving from down to up. As it's moving from down to up, it's revealing more information. Okay, I think this, this trailer was, literally, it just came out like, uh, this trailer just came out early April. And it's being circulated around in like the, the design community, I think. And I think it's a great, when I saw it, I thought it was a great opportunity to, as like a after effects lesson because, and also just like a visual communications lesson. Everything about this, all the motion here supports the theme of film. Like, like these letter E's just flying up. It's kind of like a film reel, okay? Even though no one watches 35 millimeter film reels anymore, it's all digital, but still. And then um, all this motion is totally unnecessary, but you gotta have things move when you're making videos, especially short videos. You gotta have stuff move, even if it's kind of for no reason, because it just, creates dynamic, uh, it just makes your video more watchable. And each time this video moves up, it reveals new, it's like reshuffling the words, okay? So it makes people just read it again and again. Like the subtle way that it, it, it gets the message across is really well done. Even just the graphic design of it, this, this font is huge, this is a little bit smaller because it's not as important. Stuff like that, okay? I think it's really important. If you guys see uh, videos that are well done, I'm sure you guys do this already. You, you talk about it and discuss it, break it down. Why is it so powerful? Why does it work? All right. I'm just gonna save this project in case we do wanna come back to it later today. And I wanna move on to the next exercise. I promised yesterday that when I was revealing that tribal tattoo, 
that um because i just flew through it yesterday super fast um i'm happy to to work on that today because sometimes sometimes it takes like a day for something to just like sink into your brain okay and that if what the heck that's so weird how did that happen okay that is crazy okay we don't have to open that really i didn't do any work on it all i did with that that file was just me trying to get it set up for you guys i'm going to just start a new after effects project and i'm importing this PSD file that I included in today's folder called Tribal Tattoo Separated, and I'm importing it as a composition. Holy crap. My video card is going crazy right now. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen to you guys. It might just be me. I've had graphics card issues in the past with an older laptop. I th right. Yeah, maybe it's because I got Zoom on and I'm also using OBS to record this session. Um, anyway, my PSD file is fine. Uh, when you guys open up After Effects file number two, Reveal Mask, does it look weird to you guys? Go ahead and try that. In After Effects, just go to File Open and open number two, Reveal Mask Quadrants. Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. It's, it says four files are missing. Yeah, okay, that's really weird. Let me try importing that PSD file again. I'm gonna import that PSD file as a composition. Okay, that is so, that is ridiculously strange. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna quit After Effects and start over. Cool. Sorry about that delay. It happens all the time, mm -hmm. especially in these programs. Yeah, I mean, um, I did get a warning that, that something was wrong, but I just chose to continue. If I had a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, while this is opening up, let me just give you guys a verbal recap of what we did yesterday with Reveal Mask. The tribal tattoo has been separated into five layers, and we're dividing them up in Photoshop to prep it for After Effects because it's easier to reveal certain shapes individually than it is to try to reveal a really complex design like this tattoo image. So what I'll be doing is using the solo button and working on one layer at a time. I'll be revealing one layer at a time by drawing masks and animating those masks on, on one layer at a time. Okay, I hope this works because Composition looks good. I'm merging layer styles. Merging layer styles into footage is a default option. Just click OK. All it means is that if there's, uh, I personally usually just merge it, but, but if you have a drop shadow, you guys know what layer styles are in Photoshop. My favorite layer styles in Photoshop or most often used is probably drop shadow, bevel and emboss and outer glow you know those are like layer styles there's so many of them in photoshop in after effects you can animate those attributes for those layer styles for example what are some attributes in what are some okay it's screwed up uh drop shadow has like the how, how blurry it is the distance those attributes can actually be keyframed in after effects if you choose to bring them in and let them be editable I think we would probably use something too with like, we do a lot of like time-lapse shadow effects from video and it'd be cool if we could figure out how to do that graphically. Time-lapse shadow? 
As in, like, um... <laughs> Sorry. So, like, if we could, have like, animate a shadow to, like, look like the sun is moving, you know, like, the shadow has changed, that'd be really cool, because I know that they spend a lot of time, like, recording that on video, so it'd be cool to figure that out graphically. <clears throat> We'd have to... Would we have to create... <coughs> Can you do layer styles in After Effects like you can in Photoshop? Like if yes. you were to do something like that, you wouldn't have to do it all in Photoshop first and then bring them in as editable. Like you could just do it in After Effects. Yes, you can. You can apply. Um, I'll show you in a moment here. Uh, wow. Okay. Let me just. I know, I think I know what went wrong, but let me just show you guys how to do it. Okay, let's say I create some text here. And I need, I'm going to hit Command Y to make a new solid, like just a new background. I'm just going to make a light colored background. What goes good behind? I'll just choose no, pink. Okay, so I got some text. If I select this text layer, um, you would think that all those layer styles are underneath effects, like drop shadow and stuff, but it's actually underneath the layer menu. And if you go to the layer menu, there's a sub menu called layer styles. And here's all, look at all of these layer styles. Those are the exact same layer styles that exist in Photoshop. So if I choose drop shadow, it instantly puts a drop shadow there and you can, in your timeline, you can look at all these attributes for the drop shadow like angle okay this might be something that you're talking about i'm going to keyframe the angle and then i can drag it around and that angle will change let me increase the distance so it's more obvious okay so now my drop shadow has been animated Ooh. what's what's awesome is if you yeah. if you design something in photoshop with these layer styles you can when you import you can choose to le let those layer styles be editable and then you can animate. Would you, like, what's the point where you would um, do something, like create the file in Photoshop rather than oh, why, After Effects, um, you know, like? Yeah, that we, we kind of had that question yesterday and, and I, I said that I would do the text in After Effects. Um, if I'm, if I'm working with text, I'm probably going to make it in After Effects if I plan on animating it. If I'm working with, with graphics, if it's a really simple graphic, for example, like just arrows and stuff, I, I usually stay in, in After Effects because I feel like I just have more control. Like this mask, let's say I had an arrow and I wanted to move it around. I can actually keyframe it to change shape. But if I brought it in, if I brought it in from Photoshop, I might not, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now, which is to so just have gonna, it like. I was going to say, it sounds like you're saying kind of that, like you create an extra step if you do it in Photoshop, like you can directly edit it here in one stop shop. Exactly. Like, and well, it's not even that I created, an, it's not even that you get an extra step in Photoshop there. You literally cannot do anything if you bring certain things in Photoshop, if I bring in text from Photoshop, I don't have, I don't have the ability to use a lot of these preset gotcha. animations. For example, um, I was going to show you guys this later, but when if it comes up right now, it's worth it to talk about right now. Um, I'm just going to write a, a little bit of a, uh, I could just leave it. Okay. So this text was made in after effects. So there's a, there's a whole library of presets, of preset animations, and it takes a moment to load when you get to this window. If you guys wanna um, create some text, you can go to window, and it's it's not effects, it's, it's, there's some different windows here, but um, you wanna show effects and presets. So you could hit Command-5, and it'll take a moment to load up because there's such a huge library. And let's say I just type in like fade and you have to be a little bit aware of which one of these are for 
or images and which one are for text, but I don't know if you guys can see this on your screen. It's really small, but when I, when I typed in fade as a search, a lot of stuff comes up, but if I choose any of these preset animations that are in a text submenu, like fade up and flip, check this out. I'm just going to double click on this. If you guys remember from yesterday, hitting the letter U will show you all keyframes. So I can see that there's some keyframes there. And when I hit play, my text automatically gets flipped up. You can't really, um, you can't really do this if you bring in text from Photoshop. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Huge time saver for us too. Yeah. Yeah, you don't even really even need to know After Effects to be able to apply some of these animations. Okay, do you guys use Adobe Bridge at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes for Adobe yeah. Bridge. Not often, but... Okay, yeah, it's, it's, you know, Adobe Bridge is cool. It's especially useful for After Effects because you can see a video preview of, of the hundreds of different text animations in Adobe Bridge. You can, you just, uh, I'll tell you guys what the path is later, but you can't see a preview in this search window. So like, I might be like, hey, what's random fade up? What's slow fade on? What are all like encoder fade out? Like you kind of just have to know what it is by the name of it. But in Adobe Bridge, you can see the preview and be like, hey, that's the one I want. And a lot of them look bad. Like most of them, as you guys know, with the preset animations, most of them are, are just like canned presets that aren't really going to be usable or only usable in very, very specific situations, but there's a lot of good ones that look classic that will always, that will always be professional looking. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to give you guys this file again, and I really wonder why it's it didn't work. Okay. So the Photoshop file is okay. There's just something weird about bringing it into Bring it in, and I'm just going to upload this to. Somehow it got corrupted, so I don't know how. Maybe in the transfer. Can you edit imported files like you would like a smart object? Like if you imported an Illustrator file into Photoshop and go to the smart object, you can like edit it in Illustrator and then it'll update live in Photoshop. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't even have to be a smart object. Uh, it's, if, um, let me see how, let me give you an example here. Okay, you're animating a character and uh, you've got some animation and the character's jumping up and down doing all this stuff. And then the client's like, hey, we need to, we need to put a hat on this guy or we need to change the hair let's say the hair was a separate piece in Photoshop, you literally just change it in Photoshop and, um, and there's something called where you can just swap it out or sometimes it will just update. But it's important to know how to do both. Uh, sometimes it'll just update for you automatically and sometimes it won't, okay? If it doesn't, then you have to manually do it, which is still just as easy. And all that animation, all the keyframes that you already had set, it does, it'll stay there and the hair will just get swapped out or the if any kind of graphics on there can just get swapped out. And we've used that a lot because, I mean, that's just such a common thing to have happen where. Mm So when you're importing from Photoshop and all that, like, and you're saying it, it can update, you want to make sure you're not moving around your links or anything, right? Because then they'll get broken and you'll have to relay. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, uh, of course, if you, um, if you change the, if you change the folder it was in, then, then After Effects won't be able to find it. But it's not even that big of a deal because all you have to do is just right click and choose replace footage. Just like in Premiere, if you guys have done had to do that, like sometimes you're like, hey, where's that video that was in here? It's gone. You just choose replace footage and you just find, you just relocate it again. 
and and After Effects will save it or we'll we'll put it back in. Okay, I just gave you guys a Google Drive link to the PSD file that I think somehow something weird happened because uh, I'm gonna be more careful and make sure I don't have Zoom Zoom open when I'm saving files and stuff. I I'm gonna blame it on Zoom. Okay, <laughs> even though it, most likely I'll, it was probably my fault. Okay, I'm gonna just admit most problems are usually user error. So I'm gonna say it was probably my fault, but Zoom's a pretty good scapegoat right now. <laughs> okay, I'm starting a new After Effects project and I'd like you guys to just do this together with me. When you start a new After Effects project, please double click in the project window to import And look for the, the PSD file that I just gave you again for a second time. It's called Tribal Tattoo Separated. But when you import it, guys, you, there's this drop down menu where you have to switch from footage to composition. And then when you import it, just click OK for everything. Oh my God, it's so weird. Okay, I'm gonna have to do something. Oh yeah, so I think I've noticed that too, like, changing a file but it has the same name when you re-import it it still goes to the old file so you have to rename it is that basically what you were doing okay no it's uh what i what i did was okay when after after effects is used to importing in videos and image sequences so what it does is it looks at the file name and if there's different numbers it'll assume that you're trying to bring in an image sequence. So my mistake was when I imported it as a composition, I left this box checked where it said Photoshop sequence. Just make sure you, when you, okay, when you guys bring in, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I, let me just make sure that this works before. Okay, I think it's gonna work now. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna start all over again. I just gave you guys a new Photoshop file and let me just make sure that this works for everyone and then I'll explain what happened. Please double click to import. I'm sorry to, to make you start over again. Find that Photoshop file that I just gave you guys, select it. And in addition to changing from footage to composition, please make sure that nothing else is checked. Uh, my, my mistake that I made was Photoshop sequence was checked and it was, it was combining it with other Photoshop files, thinking that it was a, a video. Hmm. Okay, once you import it, there's going to be two things in your project window. There's going to be a composition and then a folder that's full of the layers in from Photoshop. Okay, you don't really ever have to mess with that folder. It's very rare that you're gonna have to open that up, but don't delete it. Just please double click on the composition icon in, that you've imported. And then everything's gonna look totally black because it's a black design on a black background. However, if you look for this transparency icon, Okay, we, we talked about this on day one, actually. There's a, there's a checkerboard icon in the middle of your viewer. Just click on it and you should see the whole design. Okay, let me know if that worked for you guys or if, if anyone had trouble, let me know and, and I'll help you out. I'm good. Okay, so sequences, image sequences are oftentimes uh, better than a video. 
why is it better to have a video as a series of PNGs or a series of JPEGs? Why is it better to have a video as an image sequence versus an MP4? Anyone know why? Because an MP4 has compression on it. And, it, and a lot of times it could be compressed so much that the quality, a lot of quality is lost or compromised. Whereas if you have an image sequence, you can still retain that high quality and you have the video and um, it's easier to, you don't have to worry about like different, if people have that codec to be able to read that image sequence or not. So it's almost like a, a little bit more reliable sometimes to have image sequences. Now you just have to be careful because if you have file names, like what happened to me, I had file names that were similar and I had file types that were similar. If you check, if you import something and you have sequence checked, it'll just bring it in as like a video. Okay, first exercise, please use the solo button on layer one. So I'm gonna first highlight layer one and make sure that it's highlighted white and then use that solo button so you're looking at nothing except for layer one and you're gonna see this black sliver of a moon. We're gonna hit the letter G to activate the pen tool and please be careful, before you start clicking with the pen tool, you have to make sure that layer one is highlighted white. Okay, number one mistake I, I encounter with students is they forget to highlight anything and when you start to use the pen tool, it creates something called a shape layer. And shape layers came out in like around 2010. It, was, it wasn't always around. They were trying to implement new things and it's a shape layer is almost like a vector image in After Effects and they are useful in certain situations, but usually no one ever uses them. They were just trying to kind of rebrand After Effects and like give it a boost and say, hey, we got some new stuff in there, but no one ever really used it. It just kind of created some more confusion for teachers. So please make sure that before you use any masking, even when you guys were masking we are one, maybe you forgot to have anything selected and then that'll end up creating a shape layer, which all you have to do is just delete it. It's not a big deal. So highlight layer one and then activate your pen tool. And when you draw mask points, envision quadrants like I did yesterday. Okay, let me just finish masking this out and then I'm gonna show you, remind you how to change the color of the mask so that it's easier to see on a light background. I'm gonna hit the letter, I'm gonna select the layer and hit the letter M. And then when you see mask one, there's gonna be a colored box. All you have to do is just click on the colored box and make that color a little bit darker. So what I'm looking for is for everybody to create a mask around this moon shape, but please, please make it very angular and envision quadrants. Okay, please make sure that every mask point that's going on the outside of the moon has a corresponding mask point partner on the inside of the moon. All right, so you guys should have an even number of mask points. Don't even bother counting them. I'm just saying that every mask point has a partner because we're gonna move them to, we're gonna, it's gonna help us stay organized when we animate. Okay, I'm gonna move my timeline down the line and now is the time to set a keyframe for mask path. I'm a little bit frustrated with After Effects because when they switched from CS6 to Creative Cloud, they changed the terminology. This attribute used to be called mask shape. I feel like that was a lot more intuitive than calling it mask path, okay? When you keyframe the mask shape and you go to another frame and you change the shape, that makes sense that this mask will now morph into the, the other shape based on the keyframes that you set, but they changed the name to mask path. I'm only making a big deal out of this technicality on the wording to help you remember that mask path is the attribute you need to keyframe to change the shape. I'm, I'm moving back in time a little bit. And here's the huge confusing part that I was talking about yesterday. How do we move just one point? If I try to hover over a mask point and move it to set a new keyframe, I move the entire mask as a whole. How do I 
I just hit undo, by the way. How do I move just one single mask point? Anyone remember? I feel command. like you selected it, but. Or option, command. Yeah, hold, exactly. Hold command and your cursor will switch to the selection tool. So I think it's best if we do this together. Hold command and then click on any transparent area. Just click once. Look what happened to the mask points. Can someone describe visually what happened to the mask points when I held command and clicked off? Square two circles or dots. Perfect, perfect. We switched to layer mode. And now all we have to do is to hover over one point that we want to move. Don't even, look, I'm not even using my other hand anymore now. I'm just hovering over with my mouse and I click and drag and I can just move one point over. Okay, then I'm moving another point over and please start to retract this mask from both ends so we can start to hide this moon from both sides. We're not gonna animate this entire tribal tattoo today. We're only gonna work on a couple pieces, okay? Because it's, it's gonna eat up a lot of time and I don't think that's the best use of our class time unless, um, and, but I'm happy to go off script at any time if you guys are like hey you know what we need to we're working on something right now as a team and we need to go over this i'll be happy to change it up okay but i, I do have a plan for today now i'm going to move to the left a little bit you can use command left arrow to move back in time okay here's where it can get a little confusing if i hover over and just move one point at a time look how long this will take guys i don't want to be moving each individual point at the same time i mean there's nothing wrong with it. I would never fault you for doing this because you're still getting the job done. But look, I gotta just make almost double the amount of clicks to move this mask. Okay, instead, hold command and then you can drag a box around more than one point at the same time and move them as a group. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally using my left hand and holding command and then clicking and dragging while holding command and I can grab a whole group of points. And please be aware that you can even hit Command T and free transform those mask points. Mm -hmm. And then of course I hit return to finalize my move. And eventually, this, this does take some practice. Most people do not uh, pick up on this skill right away. It takes a little Hold bit on. of practice. I just hit enter. Because I thought that that's what you said, and now my screen went black. Is there a way to undo that? Yeah. Okay. When you hit enter, it's the same. That was Victoria? Yeah. Okay. Victoria, double. she hit enter, and that's equivalent to double-clicking on... That's equivalent to double-clicking on your layer. All it did was open up a new tab. Okay. I could be wrong, Victoria. Maybe something else happened, but um, if you look at the top of your screen, just switch back to your composition tab. Did that fix it? Uh, let me see. Yep. Okay, great. So it, this is gonna happen to everybody and it happens to me um, every day still because it's very easy to accidentally double click on a layer. And what, what that means is it opens that layer to display it isolated from everything else. And it opens it in a new tab. So a little bit annoying, but it doesn't mess anything up. All you have to do is just avoid double clicking or hitting enter when you don't need do you, to. Do you need to delete it at all or is it okay to just like ignore it? You can ignore it. I usually like to just close it because I don't like to have extra tabs open. Right. But it doesn't delete anything. It doesn't, closing those tabs out doesn't do anything bad. So I'm getting, when I press command, mm -hmm. instead of like the direct selection, I'm getting a delete anchor point. If you hover over the point first, cause I had that too, and then hit command, then you can make the box. If I hit command when I'm outside of the point, then it seems to be deleting it. It's still not, yeah, like okay. when I go over the point, it's an arrow, but it won't move it directly. It moves the whole thing. And then when I hit command, it's delete anchor point. Okay. Uh, if you try to move it, it's moving everything because all the mask points are selected. So hover over, hover over the transparent background. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and now make, ah. 
you do oh, have to make sure that you hit G to make sure that you're using the pen tool and then hold command and click once, just click once and then hover back over just one point and move it. Oh, I see. You have to click first. Okay. Yeah. It, and this is a very, very frustrating thing about After Effects because it's not, it doesn't work exactly the same as the pen tool in other Adobe products, but I can assure you, you know, and along with the whole rest of the After Effects community in the world that you can get used to it. And, and I'm not actually mad at it because the way they designed it, um, I've had to animate a lot of masks. The way they designed it, it really does make sense for speed. So eventually this type of animation that I've got on my screen, this is what we're going for. Okay, it might not look like that right now, but I think you guys understand the concept of it and it you can tell that it's just a, something that requires practice. It's not like you guys don't understand how it works. It's just, you don't have the muscle memory yet to move quickly. But you, um, one of you guys, maybe multiple people on the team will get really good at this. But if you have one, there's always gonna be one person that's just like, just takes to this like a fish out, fish and water and is going to be the go-to person and you'll probably get all the animation tasks dumped on you, but hopefully you enjoy it too. How were you selecting multiple points to move again? Great question. Um, again, move over some transparent area and make sure you're, you are in the pen tool. If you're in the selection tool, you got to just hit G and reactivate the pen tool. Hold command. Make sure you make sure your mask points are square already. Hold mm -hmm. command and then just drag a box around whatever you want to select. Ah, okay. And of and course, then, command. And then do. Oh wait, here we go. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's. This exercise can be really frustrating and. Uh, it makes you, yeah, you just have to make sure that you're using the pen tool and you're comfortable with command and option. Okay, it's almost 10 o'clock, so I wanna, I just wanna go over one more shape really quickly because the moon shape is kind of very, very easy compared to other shapes. So I do wanna demonstrate um, really quickly and give you guys a chance to practice something. I don't want to demonstrate on layer two. I actually, I'm showing layer two because it's very much like layer one. It's, it's like you just create these quadrants around and then hit the letter M to expose the mask path attribute, change the color if need be, because After Effects just randomly picks a color for you. All right. And then you start to keyframe and work backwards. The shape that I want to show, do a demo on is layer number three, because uh, let me just do a quick demonstration of if I start using that quadrant method on layer three, um, I'm confident that you guys will notice that this does not look that good. You guys can't see my hands, but I am, I'm keeping, I'm using a PC and I'm using my pinky finger on control all the time, but you guys will probably be using your thumb on command. If I'm on a Mac, I use my thumb on command. Okay. Guys, take a look at this animation and, and be critical. Why does this not look that good? It has like three endpoints, maybe four. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It doesn't look like it's growing organically from the root because it, it because this like okay, Cindy was saying, it's, back, like, it's got multiple points. Early on in the animation, yeah, it's back here. Early on in the animation, there's a separation between the the final hook, and it doesn't look like it's growing out. Right. So, 
the reason I want to I want to spend some time on this demo is because I want to show you how to solve that problem and a quick way to solve it is to is to add extra keyframes where you need it to fix the problem. Okay, for example, I'm going to go to this is this is my go to list for problem solving and animation. I mean, everyone's got to have a go to list when you need to solve problems. What do you do if you walk into your house and you don't have Wi Fi on your phone? What's the first thing you do? Right? You, you go check the router, maybe you reset the router, whatever. What do you do if you get in your car and you try to turn on the engine and the nothing works? The battery probably died. So you got to like, you know, there's, there's a go-to list you have, you, have to, you have to hit to solve problems. And same with animation. My go-to list is always go to the first frame where things look bad. Okay, so looks good, 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 looks bad. That little tip is poking out there. So I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna use my pen tool, hover over, create some barrier mask points to protect the good part that looks good. And then I put a point in the middle there, whoops. And then I'm gonna move that mask point to keep it hidden. Go to the next frame. Okay, I want to keep that hidden. So I'm forcing it to keep it hidden. At this point, this is an advanced lesson, but I think it's important just to show you guys my thought process and how I solve the problem. And I'm saying it's an advanced lesson because I do have to delete some existing keyframes that were bad. But what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm editing existing mask points to hide what I didn't like. All right, and, and when we do this exercise together, I think that's when it's really gonna click. And now you can see that, I hope you guys can see that it is indeed looking more natural. Okay, it's okay to add points while you're animating. It's not okay to delete points. And you don't delete points while you're animating because they... Because those points were needed for other keyframes to define the shape. Okay, so if you add to them, that's fine, but... Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, great, great comment. Okay, um, I'm just trying to move super fast, but if you guys look at my animation now, that looks way more natural than it did before. Yeah. Okay, like it's actually growing out. Okay, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but I think it is a worthwhile exercise to keyframe the revealing of layer number three. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the mask and start over. Please use the solo button on layer number three And that, that way, that's all you're going to be looking at. Make sure that layer number three is highlighted white. Activate your pen tool. And please just make a rectangle around this whole shape. So only four points. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct you guys for the first few steps. And, and I want to be really strict on making sure you guys do exactly what I do because it's going to make this lesson go a little faster. Okay. So please just make a rectangle with only four points. I know that we're talking about multiple quadrants before, but I think this will speed up the exercise. And hit the letter M right away after you close that mask, after you close those four points and made a rectangle, hit the letter you, M, change the color if needed. Yes, question. Where right now in the timeline should we be? Doesn't matter. When okay. you draw a mask, good, great question. When you draw a mask, you're not actually setting any keyframes yet. When you edit the mask, then it does matter. But for now, we're just drawing the mask, so it doesn't matter. Do you know why, what reason, if you're hitting M and it's not doing anything, is that like a common problem? No, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's common. You, 
when you hit M, all M means is show me, you're telling After Effects, show me the masks on this layer. So if nothing happens, it means that you have no masks on that layer. You might have accidentally drew the mask on a different layer. So make oh, sure, okay. Yeah, make sure layer three is highlighted white and then use the pen tools to start drawing your mask. You can okay. actually hit M at any time, even if you're in the middle of drawing a mask. Okay. Okay, once you have the square, once you have a rectangle around the shape, Hit the letter M, move the timeline just somewhere after zero. All right, Heather, can you mute yourself? Yeah. I can hear all the background. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm just moving my timeline forward a little bit, and I'm dropping a keyframe in. I'm clicking on the stopwatch for mask path. Um, FYI, I found out on Zoom, if you just hold... I don't think this is a good idea for us to do because we're using After Effects right now, but spacebar is a quick way to just uh, unmute yourself temporarily on Zoom. But um, that way you can, if, this is not for us. I think you guys should keep your mics on. Um, that, that noise actually doesn't bother me. It might bother you guys, but uh, in the future, you can always just use spacebar to unmute yourself. You're a teacher, you're used to all the commotion. <laughs> huh? You're a teacher, you're used to all the commotion. I know, I'm, I'm used to mm -hmm. you guys not even paying attention to me. I'm, like, I'm used <laughs> to you guys playing video games right now instead, or like on social media, which you might be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, high school kids are the worst. They'll, they'll literally ask me questions while they're holding their phone up in the middle of like doing something on their phone. They're not even paying attention. They'll be like, hey, by the way, um, yeah, no respect at all. Okay, I, I set a keyframe for mask path and now I'm gonna just move back a few frames. Like don't even worry about how many, just drag your timeline back. And please watch my screen here. I'm holding down command, I'm clicking off, and then I hover over the edge. Guys, this might sound crazy, but I'm not hovering over a mask point, I'm hovering over the edge and I click and drag. And when you hover over an edge, you can move two points at the mm. same time. And, and look at how quickly I just animated this thing growing. Okay, you guys might be looking at this and you're saying, you know what, that looks okay to me. And, and honestly, if I'm in a huge rush, I'm not gonna go in there and animate every little hook growing out, you know, like a vine, I'm gonna just I'm going to just drop these keyframes in and, and be done with it. But, but I think this is a good exercise for really fine tuning the animation. Okay. Any questions about setting two keyframes for the quick reveal? If not, I'm just going to move on here. Move your timeline. I'm using command right arrow and I'm, and I'm using that method of where I go to the first frame where it looks bad. So it looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, as soon as that, that hook appears and there's a separation from the root, I know that this is time for me to use my pen tool and just hover over and add three points. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. You can't just add one point, you can't just add two points. I'm adding three points because I need the two barrier points. That's like a moat. We put moats around castles to protect the castle. Well, I'm putting two points around this middle point to protect the rest of the mask. So I can move this middle point around without messing up the rest of my mask. And I, I know you guys understand that because you, you use Illustrator and Photoshop. Okay, sometimes it even helps to add Bezier handles to this point. To, to mask off a larger section without messing up anything. What was the, um, what did you hit to make it um, the curved point? Uh, hold option and just, after, well, first I had to make that third point. Then, right. yeah, then I, then I just moved it out here. It's sharp. I hold option and just single click. Okay. Yeah, great question. Okay, creating Bezier handles is how you, is how you make nice curves. Now, what I'm gonna do is use command right arrow and I'm, if I move to the next frame, that frame's messed up too, but 
I don't want to just have like making too many keyframes is like, is like having too many puppies. Okay. It's just going to be way too much work. I don't, I don't want to have to manage a whole entire kennel of dogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward a little bit further and then I'm going to move that third point down and adjust the handles. I'm trying not to make too many points. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So I went further down the timeline and you can cover more ground. Okay, here's a point in the exercise where I don't think it's absolutely necessary for me to, to walk you guys through the rest of it. You can, I think I got my point across and from here I think it's useful to just watch what I do and then we'll just go on to the next exercise. Okay, so how do I finish this animation? Well, what I'll do is I'll just start animating the, I'm gonna set another keyframe in here where I hide that endpoint and I'm just moving a lot of these points away and I'm going to keep manipulating the base, the, the root part to expose, I'm adding new points and I want to expose the rest of the, this shape without exposing the sharp tip. Okay. And you can add more points. And look at how I'm making it grow, right? And then finally, on the last keyframe, it's, it's totally revealed, and let's play this. Okay. So uh, you guys have these files, and practicing, or not even practicing, just simply revealing images in an artistic way is huge for motion graphics because you didn't have to reveal this in an artistic way. You could have just keyframed the opacity, just a boom appear, but, but that's not artistic and that's not going to separate you from all the millions of other videos out there. You got to make your, your message a little more unique and the way you express that has to be unique as well. And if you can express your message in a way that thematically ties in, with the rest of your whole project, the style, the colors, the font, you know, that's how you, that's how you be a good motion designer is all your, your animation is tied into the theme, just like how this, these letter E's are, are running like a reel that ties into the theme. <clears throat> okay. Finally, I want to just move on to pushing forward with kinetic type and using we're, what I'm going to do might seem repetitive. It's very similar to something we did. It's very similar to what we did the last class. I'm even using the same exact project, but I'm going to show you in a, a different way. Instead of, I'm still going to start by, by bringing in this audio clip and setting markers. Anyone remember the keyboard command to set a marker? Shift one. Okay, shift one sets a marker. That's where the narrator says you stay. Shift two, I'm marking where the narrator says classy. Shift three is where the narrator says San Diego. And what's the second step? I don't know if you guys watched any of the videos or, or looked at the notes, but the second step is to then place your words in the final position that you want it to be in, okay? So this is where you get a little bit artistic. Um, I'm just going to rearrange these, this type a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, that's good enough for now. And if we follow the, the same formula as we did on, on Wednesday, I would keyframe position, scale, rotation of all three words and then work backwards and move them off screen. But here's the, here's method number two. 
usually when I show two methods, method number two is better. Method number one was simply to introduce concepts. In my opinion, method number two here is, is equal. The, the value is equal. It's not necessarily better all the time, but I'm going to select all three words and I'm going to hit shift command C to pre-comp them. I'm going to call this uh, words comp. Then I'm going to expose position, rotation, and scale and keyframe all three. Okay, but check this out. I'm going to move to marker number one. And I'm going to focus on the word you stay at marker number one. And, I, and I, I'm pretty sure you guys are probably already understanding what I'm going to do here. Then I go to marker number two. The word classy is what's important. Where'd my words go? My bad. I turned the scale to zero instead of the rotation to zero. Okay, there we go. So I want the word classy to be right there. Boom. And then finally, San Diego. It's okay, and maybe you stay should be more flat. Okay, so each one of each one of these three columns of keyframes is the perfect position for where I want the you know the word that's being heard to be viewed. But now it's time to then work backwards and move it off screen. Going back in time a little bit, let's get the word you stay out of here. Jump to marker number two by hitting two on my keyboard. Go back in time, command one, two, three, four frames with my left arrow key. And let's get the word. Okay, now what I'm trying to do is to, let, let me just hit play right now. I'm gonna mute my audio. Right now, my animation is way, way too frantic. Why is that? Because it never stays still. It never gives you a chance to read it. How do you get something to stay still as an animator? Pop quiz, how do you get something to stay still as an animator? What does the graph look like when something stays still? A horizontal line. Okay, if you guys visited me in the hospital and you looked at my heart, heart rate and it was a horizontal line, it means I'm dead because I'm not moving, all right? So if you want something to stay still as an animator, you have to duplicate the keyframe and have two keyframes that have the same value so that it's a horizontal line. So how do I get you stay to stay still? Well, all I'm gonna do is just select the, these three keyframes and hit Command C, Command V to paste so that these two columns of keyframes here are identical and now it's going to uh, pretty much stay still. I gotta show you, this, this is gonna force me to introduce something else. I want the word classy to stay still. So I select these three keyframes, Command C, Command V, and then we'll let San Diego stay still. Now let's watch this play. Okay, there's a little bit of wobble and that's because After Effects naturally is trying to... You ran it, After Effects is naturally trying to smooth things out. So you have to change something called keyframe interpolation. Look at how I'm selecting all these keyframes. I right click and earlier today I showed you guys ease in and ease out. I'm doing the opposite guys. I'm going to keyframe interpolation and I'm changing the keyframes. I'm making sure that it's linear. Okay, hold on, I have to select. I'm selecting too many at a time. Yeah, this is kind of stupid. I have to select, I'm just gonna worry about position. I have to select one attribute at a time. I gotta make sure I choose linear. And now when I hit play, this is another way to work. And I like showing this method because what you could do is you could literally sculpt your word sculpture. 
Okay, you could arrange your word sculpture however you want in a big block, a big mass of, of words and images, comp them all together and just spin that comp around and make sure that it's in sync with your audio. Okay, I think this exercise is really important. Um, but you guys let me know if you want to practice it or if you want to move to alpha track map. Can you, sorry, can yeah. you show what you did? Because I've noticed like the times that I've created stuff, almost always I'll have an issue with like the wobble. Can you show again what you did to yeah. make it linear? Yes, good. I'm, I'm glad that you've been practicing. And uh, what Heather's talking about is when you set, when you set two keyframes for position, sometimes, or three keyframes, sometimes it doesn't move exactly how you expected. Okay, and it's usually when you like have to paste, copy and paste keyframes. So here's my motion. Okay, nothing surprising about that. Now let's say I wanted to stay still at the peak of the movement. So I select this keyframe and I hit copy and paste. Okay, it's staying still. Um, so I gotta be honest, I don't know why it happens. Sometimes it's wobbly and sometimes it's not. But um, if you notice that there's some wobble, just select all your, key all your position keyframes, right click, go to, go to a, a window, an option called keyframe interpolation. And you, there's two drop down menus. Change them both to linear. Okay. Linear interpolation means that there's, there's not going to be any curvy motion. For example, I think this is worth discussing. Like, you know, um, Here's a graph of, you know, number of, of coronavirus positive tests, right? Then there, what if there's a, what if the curve looked like this? What's the difference? Well, one, the green line is linear interpolation. It's constant. So there's not going to be any confusion or, or subtle change in speed. If you've got a curve, that's, that's auto Bezier. All right, so let me go back to After Effects. In order to get rid of wobbles, go to keyframe interpolation and make sure all your options are set to linear and then there won't be any kind of like change in speed over time. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Okay, I think that this lesson um, for you guys, you seem to have a good understanding of, of when to pre-comp layers because we did that we are one exercise at the very beginning. So I don't think this is that necessary for you guys to spend class time to practice. And, um, and I'll be sending you guys a video where we can, you know, you guys can go through and step by step watch what I do to, to get this style of animation. So what I think is most important is I want to cover a topic called alpha track mat, which is, is related to masking. And it's, it's really, really important to utilize alpha track mats in After Effects because it's analogous to clipping masks in Photoshop and Illustrator. Can someone tell me what is a clipping mask in Photoshop or Illustrator? How would you explain clipping mask to someone that doesn't know anything about digital art a window that lets you view a certain part of the artwork yeah perfect a clipping mask is literally a window anyone else want to add to that okay I'm gonna say a clipping mask you use the word inversion or invert yeah, you, yeah, it's definitely related for sure. When you use a clipping mask, you're literally cropping something using a shape. So I think I like the word crop because that's, it's like layman's terms. Okay, it makes sense. 
window to reveal is also uh, very easy to understand. Before I show you guys uh, using a clipping mask in After Effects, which is known, I wish they just would stick to the same name, but they call it Alpha Track Mat. I think it's really important to review how to, how to use a clipping mask in Photoshop because it's related. Okay, guys, please look at my screen real quick. In Photoshop, I have a, a picture of a desert. There's some people in the desert. And then underneath, I have a shape. How do I crop this photo with the star shape? Does anyone know? You can um, take the star layer and do a selection of it, whatever your shortcut yep. is. Yep. And then, and then put your mask on top. Yeah, you could use Command J or use a layer mask. There's so many different ways to do it. Okay, to activate a clipping mask in, in Photoshop though, the quick way to do it is to make sure that your shape is underneath what you're trying to crop. Hover over the horizontal line, hold option. And it, it's really stupid because this is like totally not intuitive. You got to hover over the horizontal line, hold option and click. And then it crops it and it, create, it indents that top image and creates a clipping mask. And this is really powerful because I can move that photo independently, right? I can put those people in there and I can also free transform the shape if I want to anytime, you know, any way I want. That's really powerful. Okay. In illustrator, how do you perform a clipping mask operation? Anyone know? All the way around. I, right. right. The, the layer order and then selecting both command seven. That's the key word. Sin said layer order. I wish, again, I'm always bashing on Adobe, even though I love Adobe and I, I use it every day and I make money with it. But I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being angry because I think it's, it helps people remember and it's, it's just more interesting if you see someone get emotional about it. Okay. It, it just drives me nuts that they can't stay consistent in Photoshop. What am I talking about? Stay consistent in Photoshop. The shape you're cropping with goes under. In Illustrator, the shape you're cropping with goes over. Why do they do it that way? Well, this is what you have to do. You have to select both of these objects, but the shape is on top. And then you got to go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Another stupid thing that I got to rant about. Why do you have to say Make? Why can't I just click on Clipping Mask? Why do I have to click on Make? That's because like, you can release them too, if there was already one. I know, but the word Make, it's like, Oh yeah, click make. It just sounds weird. Like, yeah. cause you can make so many things. Why don't you, why don't you make the option called clip? That would make way more <laughs> sense. Okay. Like I don't walk around saying, just telling people, yo, make, make, <laughs> make that burger for me or whatever. Okay. Um, so that's how you apply that clipping mask in illustrator. So let me ask you guys, if you had to pick, would you, let's say you, you were the president of Adobe and you had the power that that's one of my life goals. If I could be president of Adobe, I would change all these things. Okay. Would you choose to have the clipping mask be above or below? What's your choice? We should do a poll. It makes sense for me to make it above, but I think that's because you see the shape that you're going to be taking the chunk out of that picture right away. Like, whereas if it's underneath, you clip it and then you s s reveal the shape. I totally agree. Okay. If you guys had an argument for underneath too, I would listen to it, but I would pro still probably say no. Uh, <clears throat> I would veto that. And I agree. I agree with Victoria that it should be on top so that you can kind of recognize. Okay. So in after effects, when it comes to clipping masks, they call them alpha track mats. Thank God they made it so that the mask has to be on top. Okay, here we go. I, I'm sorry I had to go off on a tangent like that, but it's, <laughs> it's, it really helps prime you for what you have to do in After Effects because it's, it's really weird. Okay, I've got an, I opened up exercise number four. This will be the last exercise and, and I'm going to go over time a little bit. I hope that's okay with you guys because I messed up the, that file and I, and I screwed up the lesson a little, which wasted some time. So I want to make up for it. Um, I, I created a little bit of motion already and this would look way better if the green land 
was cropped by the blue circle. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. then, then it would actually create an illusion like this globe is rotating. So someone tell me which layer is going to be my clipping mask? Is it the, the globe or the land? What has to go on top? The circle. Exactly. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to put the globe on top. How do you actually implement the clipping mask? In Photoshop, you had to hover over and hold option. It was really weird. In Illustrator, you got to go to a menu, then a menu within a menu. Okay. In After Effects, it's just as complicated. You have to look for a button. If you guys just look at After Effects right now on your own screen, at the bottom of your composition of your timeline, there's a button that says toggle switches and modes. You guys should see that. When you click on that button, a, it changes your interface a little bit. There's a new column, T-R-K-M-A-T. That's short for track map. Okay. Really, really weird. It's almost like they tried to make this as confusing as possible. <laughs> okay. T-R-K-M-A-T. Then you have to choose the layer that you want to crop. Guys, what do I want to crop? The globe or the land? land. The land. I land. want to crop the land, okay? So that's the, the world green alpha PNG. So there's a drop down menu that says none, and I'm going to choose alpha matte globe because you, you're basically choosing which layer you want to be the clipping mask, but it's always going to be the layer that's right above what you want to crop. Boom, I cropped it. I hit play. Someone tell me, why did that globe disappear? Because the shape is now a mask. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that happens in Illustrator too, I think, right? And Photoshop. It happens in all of these programs that, yeah. look. So um, should you be duplicating the, the layer and, and messing with the order of things? Yep. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Who said that? Victoria. Victoria, okay, good job. <laughs> you, you, you definitely are going to have no problem with this. So it instantly, when you activate a clipping mask in After Effects, it will automatically turn the visibility off of that mask, of that cropping object, because if it was on, it would just cover up what, what you're trying to see. So Victoria said, select that globe, hit Command D to duplicate it, drag it back underneath, and then turn the visibility icon on manually. Okay, there is no fast way to do this, but when you get used to it, um, it just, be, like everything else, you get comfortable with it. So let's try this exercise together. Please open exercise number four, Alpha Track Mat Globe. Okay, if you hit spacebar, you'll notice that the land is just moving from one side of the screen to the other. Don't worry about what frame you're on when you're applying alpha track mats. It doesn't matter what frame you're on, okay? What's important is the stacking order. Immediately grab your globe layer and bring it on top of the world. Bring it on top of that PNG, that world layer. That's the stacking order you need to have. You don't see any track mat column. Why? Because you got to click on that toggle switches and modes button. Boom, it's opened up. Use that drop down menu. There's, you'll see the word done for the galaxy texture as well. Just be careful you pick the correct layer, okay? So I'm, I'm making sure I'm on the world layer and I slide over to the right, switch from none to alpha track mat glow, and you get that cropping. Okay, if you hit play, it's staying cropped. Select that globe layer, hit command D. Drag, drag that globe underneath the world, and then you got to turn that visibility back on. Okay, this is really, really powerful because you could bring in a movie like the Bees movie. Okay, we got this movie of this bee moving around. And I could just make a new solid, layer new solid. 
use my pen tool or you know you know what's even better let's make this I'm using words you can use text and then I'll use that text I put the text on top of the video footage okay and let me put um this isn't going to make sense, but now I've got video footage cropped with text and you guys can see the power of this for motion graphics. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going a little bit fast right now, but check this out. You can also, you, what's really important and we'll do this as a group because this one's important. What's important when you use a clipping mask or alpha track mat is that these two layers stay together. If you start changing the order, you will break that relationship. So you got to keep them together. What I'm going to do now is duplicate this original B footage, bring it underneath. Then I'm going to select my cropped. I'm going to rename this by hitting return. I'll call this original B and further. I'll call this one cropped B. For the cropped B, I'm gonna to go to layer. I showed you guys this earlier, layer styles, and I'm gonna add a drop shadow. Boom, now you can see that drop shadow. Then I'm gonna also go to layer, layer styles. I'm gonna add a bevel and emboss. Boom, even easier to see. And now when I hit play, it's cropped. Okay, this is really powerful. Now what I can do is I can select this original movie, or maybe I'll select the, the cropped one, go to effect, color correction, hue saturation. Everyone knows about hue saturation in, in Photoshop. And maybe I'll increase the brightness here. You can even adjust the color. Let's go towards like yellow because it's for honey. Or, yeah, that's good enough. Maybe I'll saturate it in a lot. Okay, pretty cool. Even cooler if you want to offset this a little bit or set keyframes. Like just a, something really, really subtle. That's too subtle. Okay, using alpha track mat is, is huge. And um, you know, I didn't want to start off the, this whole training series with alpha track map, but it's one of the most important things to learn if you're going to do motion graphics. You got to learn how to crop things. Okay, so let's try this B exercise together. Everyone, please, you don't even have to open a new project. Just double click, import the B footage. And once you import that B footage into your project window, drag it. Don't drag it into the viewer. Don't drag it onto the timeline. Be very, very careful and drag it onto this composition icon at the base of the project window. It looks like a film strip. If you drag this B footage onto the composition icon, it creates a brand new timeline with the exact duration that you need. Once you drag that B footage onto the composition icon, activate your type tool and just create some words or letters. Once you put the text on top of your footage, you can utilize that track mat drop down menu and use that text as an alpha track mat to crop your video. Okay, once you crop that video using your text, if you duplicate your video footage with Command D, drag it to the very bottom, 
and you're not going to apply any effects to that yet but you do want to apply effects to the footage that is being cropped so that's layer two that's the one in the middle in fact i'm going to rename this layer by hitting return and i'm going to type b cropped a lot of people instinctively want to rename a layer by double clicking on it and we found out what happens when you double click it opens up the layer window which is annoying you just got to close it out to rename layers hit return and then type it in okay i'm highlighting the cropped footage and i go to the layer menu there's a whole sub menu for layer styles and i'll put a drop shadow there if you adjust the scale of your of your background footage this is already going to create like a trippy effect it's pretty cool okay if you want to increase the brightness of anything select the layer go to effect there's a whole sub menu for color correction tools once you start practicing with different types of effects, it's very easy to just learn on your own how to adjust them. So that's why I didn't spend much time with different effects because I think you guys are, it's pretty intuitive is what I'm trying to say. And I'm just gonna increase the brightness. Okay, if you, if you keyframe some motion of the background footage, like I'm keyframing the scale, maybe I'll start really big. Okay, if you keyframe some motion, that's gonna just add some interest Okay, any questions about alpha track mat? The stacking order is what's important to remember. And if you don't see that track mat column, you have to click on toggle switches and modes, which is at the bottom of your composition. That's really cool. Just to confirm too, so you, had a very specific way of importing the B footage to this comp, but last time I think we just dragged it onto the screen so that way it's just living in there. Why don't we do that for this one? Great question. If you drag something right onto the screen, for example, uh, this galaxy texture, if I just drag it right onto the screen, it's interactive. Like the placement, it's not going to instantly get centered. So when I, when I was working on the We Are One project, I, I cared about the position of that little B video. So I dragged it onto the viewer. But this time I wanted to create a composition that was exactly 11 seconds long or however long that B footage is. If, if you already have a composition that's made, let's say this composition, I'm making a composition that's like 35 seconds long. Okay, I've got a composition here that's 35 seconds long. If I drag this B footage in here, look, I dragged this B footage into a, a composition that's got way more time. There's a lot of empty space. After this B footage runs out, I still got a lot of extra time left. But if I drag this B footage onto the composition icon, Victoria, mm -hmm. my composition length is exactly the duration of the entire video that I dragged onto the icon. Even if your animation is longer than that to begin with? <clears throat> well, it created a brand new composition, so there's no okay. animation yet. Right, so this wasn't really adding to the other ones, that's why that's okay. Exactly, it creates a new composition. So this process of dragging something onto the composition icon is the same as creating new sequence from clip in Premiere. So those of you that have done video editing in Premiere, you know that sometimes you'll right click and choose create new sequence from clip. I don't know if that rings a bell, but um, it's, it's exactly the same as dragging onto this icon in After Effects. Okay. Now this might be a stupid question, but sure. just, just to confirm, so like 
all of the comps that you're creating too, like with the folders, um, those are not connected, right? Like you're now creating a new comp and then there's a way to put them together if you wanted to. Yes. All of these comps, great question. Um, that's like comp management. Victoria's asking, hey, all these comps, what's the relationship between them? Well, right. unfortunately in this window, you can't really see what the relationship is, but if you're hovered inside your uh, composition tool and you, um, and you hit tab, that can show you the relationship. Let me, let me create a situation where I have comps within comps. Um, okay, I'm just gonna comp together these globes. And now I can, now I can draw a mask around this. Okay, so I masked it out. So there's a, a comp in here. If I hit tab, I can see the relationship between the comps. They're connected. So if you ever want to, these comps are all almost act like separate videos. Okay, which is really powerful because you can drag comps into comps. Like I just dragged that, that B footage comp in here and I can mess with it. If I want to see the relationship between comps, just hit tab and it'll show you how comps are related. So that was a really good question. You're I'm thinking more so to apply to our own graphics. Like sometimes we do like a split screen. So if we want to have two different animations going on, it might be better to edit one comp completely, edit another one, and then bring that one comp into the other comp once they're done. And Absolutely. I agree. For example, like, you know, you got these different comps, these different videos, and you want to put them side by side for sure. Um, keep them as separate comps because every comp, has the same exact attributes, position, rotation, scale, as, as a layer, as a, anything you drag into After Effects, you can animate the position, rotation, or scale, even the opacity, so you can make something fade out. So hopefully you guys are seeing the potential of After Effects, really, really well-designed program because if something is made is digital, if there's a digital image or a video, you can bring it in here and manipulate it. You can mask it, you can change the position, you can rotate it, you can scale it, you can change the colors, um, you can crop it with the, another shape, you can make text go over it. Once you bring in the comp, mm -hmm. um, can, like let's say right now you just brought in that honey bee thing, mm -hmm. can you? change the text yes just double click and you'll access the the layers inside the comp i go okay. in here i'm going to turn this back on i'm going to activate my type tool and i'm just going to change it to b okay let me reposition it okay and then i'll turn the visibility button back off and it's now using you know i had to keep it off because otherwise it would cover up what i'm cropping mm -hmm. now i go back out and everything's updated Okay, so did you have to save that other? I don't have to save anything. I mean, obviously, I, before I quit or shut off my computer, I should save. But uh, when you make changes, they just, I mean, we're still working within After Effects. So it, uh, it just updates. So okay, so when you double clicked on it, sorry, do it one more time <laughs> or sure, just sure. tell me one more time. You would sure. double click on that composition icon, right? Yeah, like here, let me just show you. When you have a composition, if you want to access the layers within, just double click on it. Okay. And then it opens up the new tab yeah. and where you would the, edit it. And the timing stays in sync. Look, um, even though I'm on frame 24 in this comp, I'm so sorry. The timing, each composition is going to have its own timeline. For example, I'm on frame 24, but if I go inside this B footage comp, I'm on frame 20. If you want them to stay in sync, which sometimes you do, you go to preferences and just like any kind of preferences, you just, uh, 
synchronized time of all related items. Okay, so the it yeah, like I suspected, it sh it was supposed to be synced up. Like, look, I'm gonna move all the way to frame zero, and when I go to this B footage, or when I go back to the main comp, it's at frame zero. But why is it when I move to frame 10 and I go to this B comp, it's on frame eight. It's because the, the frame rate of the video is different from the frame rate of the composition. And this is where you need a little bit of video experience to understand why. But I think if you just try to stay consistent and make animations that are 29.97 frames per second, then you'll be fine. And double clicking on a comp is the same thing as just clicking on the tab, right? They're all shown as tabs. Exactly, exactly. If, if, so it, let's say you accidentally close some of these tabs. You didn't delete anything, no worries. Just double click on your comp and the tab will open again. Okay, cool. Yeah, great question, Heather. So guys, please feel free to email me anytime if you have questions. Okay, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any kind of questions. Just send me an email. I know we went over a lot of things and there's still, you know, so much more to learn, but if, I think you guys got a pretty good start and just judging by the, the questions that you've been asking me, I think you guys are ready to just start animating. I have one last quick question. Sure. Is there like a shortcut key to scroll through your layers? Like in Photoshop, it would be like- Yeah, there is. Okay. Yeah, great question. Um, if you hold command, use your up and down arrow. Mm. That's really powerful. Um, and another quick, let me just make some more layers here. Okay. If you wanna jump to layer four, you could hold command and just go up to layer four, but you could also, if you guys don't have a numeric keypad, so unfortunately you can't do this, but if you have a numpad, you just hit that numpad number. Mm. And let's say you had, let's say you had like 15 or 14 layers and you want to get to layer 11. There's no numpad 11, but if you hit one, if you double click one really quick on the numpad, it goes to 11. You could do, one two real quick to go to 12 you could do one five so and can you can you change the order this is something you can do in photoshop too but change the order of your layers like move them up and down yep same keyboard command command bracket will change the order for example here i'll, I'll color i'll color code this b footage i'll make it uh yellow so it really stands out i want i want this b footage to be on the very bottom shift command left bracket, boom, it's on the very bottom. Oh, I wanna raise it up three, three levels of hierarchy. Command, right bracket. Okay, cool. So yeah, it seems like it's the same as Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of it is, the majority of it is the same. And um, even though I was ranting about it, like honestly, they did a great job. And After Effects is, is there's a reason why there's no like competitor out there, because. They just did such a good job. There's no reason to make another like compositing program mm -hmm. that's layer based. After Effects is the only one out there. Okay, guys, I will email you notes, files, and some video links later today, as usual. And uh, it was really fun. I enjoyed this because I got to move at a faster pace and, and you guys have some really good questions. I'm used to teaching like larger classes where people aren't even really paying attention. So this was a treat for me. <laughs> oh, this was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to put all this into practice and then hopefully when we're ready to be intermediate advanced, maybe we can hit you up again. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if, and if you guys have questions, just email me. I'll be happy to, to help out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Otto. Guys, thanks, thanks to Cindy for setting this up, too. Yay. Yeah. 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 I'm glad I, I know you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank that relationship. 
you made it real easy. I just sent you an email and then you were like, let's do it. And we did it. So cool. I'm glad we did it. This was really fun. Awesome. Super informative. I can't imagine it doing it elsewhere. So this is really awesome. Yeah, cool. Okay, guys. Well, um, nice to meet everyone. And uh, I'm going to start following Taylor Pond on my Instagram. <laughs> guys have That's Jesse's account. So you're going to be seeing her work. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep in touch and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have a good day, guys. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.